Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. God bless you all. You are highly welcome. I appreciate you. Please share this video. This important message I I seen very interesting. So I decide to share it here. Please watch this video. The reason why most marriage is not working, and this pastor is very right because a lot of people enter marriage with a lot in their hearts, with a lot in their head. They did empty themselves before entering marriage, and this is the reason why most of marriage is not working. You, want to you get see married, husband and wife married today. You get married, we have to today they are happy. Tomorrow they are not happy. Rape. And because the rape could have been your dad. Could have been your mom. He could have been when they have in their heart before getting into but marriage they it. are not having it you keep praying or they have a lot in, your basket. in their head if they did empty their self before entering marriage some people will marry they'll be thinking about their ass and when i give it some people will be in marriage you would they didn't because that forget their ass or forget their past they didn't leave that past away before Hello, entry marriage. Praying. How and will you be in marriage when you are still having your past in your heart? Will that work? The reason no. why they're suffering Just is listen simple. to this message and share. God bless you. you. The reason. As you do. Amen. There's a girl when I was in school. Thank God my wife is not here. There's a girl when I, I mean, my wife knows the person because we were all in school together. The girl was madly in love with me and that was why I broke up with her or I never dated her let me tell you how it was I was a pastor in school because you need to see what the issues is and how they affect you because you need to check you keep moving your dustbin you keep moving your dustbin you keep moving it but what is inside the dustbin you're not treating it some of you you know what it is the emotional issues that you've been abused you've been raped you want to get married, but you can. You, but before you get married, we have to deal with that horrible experience of rape. And the rape could have been your dad, it could have been your mom, it could have been someone close to you. But instead of you to deal with it, you keep praying and moving your basket. And God is saying, Don't you understand? Before I can give you a partner, I need to heal you, or else I will give you what damage to somebody else and when i give a damaged person to somebody else you would damage him because that's what hurts people do hurt people hurt people and a lot of you that are praying and that's why a lot of marriages are suffering where are my plates bring my plates for me a lot of marriages are suffering and the reason why they're suffering is simple that's not what i'm asking i'm asking for the plates you know the reason why they're suffering is the fact that it was two damaged people that came together. So it's a competition of how do we what damage one another. When you come into a marriage, you should come with, you should come whole as a plate. You should be single. Single means whole. You should be single whole. You should be single whole. But most people don't come single like that. What do they come? They come half. So you are half. He is half. He said the two shall become one, not the two halves shall become one. Because marriage works when two whole people become one. Not when two damaged people become one. The problem is that you are thinking that marriage will fix you. No, marriage only amplifies you. He said two are better than one. That means if, we're, if, if, if you were damaged before, when you are married, you will be what? You will be better at damaging. You will be a damaging contractor. A damaging specialist. This girl, when we're in school, she would always come check me. But I could not commit. I could not commit. I could not say we're dating. I could not. How could I say we're dating? I don't know what love is. She will come. She will come. She used to stay without traffic, so like two and a half hours from University of Lagos drive. She doesn't have a car because this is long ago. One day, I, I told her, "Oh, because I was a 
church i was a fellowship pastor i said it was weekend there was easter i didn't go home there was nobody to stay at home i said i'm here and they said oh thank you in school i said there's no food that all the food stations are closed so as i've gone home you know what in two hours i saw her in my hostel she had brought food she had a t- she made the food i said i just bought the food i dropped the food. I'm, I'm going back home but you know what i couldn't as a matter of fact i she told me that what is wrong i said i don't know what is wrong and i told her i think you're not in your senses that's what i told her i think you're not in your senses i think that i said the way you love i don't think this how normal people love i thought she was the problem i did not know i was so damaged i could not receive love is that not what is happening in your marriage you're so damaged that your husband is loving you your wife is loving you but you cannot receive love because of your emotional baggage i remember some years ago before my mom passed away i sat her down i said why did you do this to me and she looked at me and said i'm sorry he said that was the best i knew he said i was only trying to motivate you but was in a negative way two years ago my stepmom my Jamaican stepmom she's moved back to Britain where she met my dad two or three years ago she was 80 and she called me and said thank you for wishing me a happy birthday I just want to apologize to you I want to apologize because I never allowed you to spend time with your father he said but listen to my side of the story i'm not a nigerian i was raised in a foreign culture i don't understand polygamy he said that was why i responded that way i thought they were trying to cheat me in a native land he says i'm older i lived in nigeria for years now i understand it he said but the damage has been done he said, all I can do is to ask for your forgiveness. And she said, can I get your brother's number? Can I get your sister's number? I would love to call them and also apologize to them. He says, unfortunately, your mom is dead by now. All I kept asking myself was this. If I'd allow this to ruin my life, where will I be? In my family, I probably were the only one I still married right now. My sister said, it's a demonic thing. I said, no. It's a programming. Because there were emotional baggages we carried into this. See, I'm a very honest pastor. I'm not perfect. And I'm saying to you, all of you that are married, even if you're married, it doesn't change anything. You still carry it. You will be in that marriage and you will be so lonely and your partner will try to do everything to make you happy and you will think it's your partner's fault. Meanwhile, it's you. Have you loved someone that it seems like a bottomless pit? No matter what you do, it doesn't reach them because there's something wrong. And I'm saying so because the first thing you have to do today is to identify the pattern. You need to sit down and identify the pattern and say, this is wrong. Why do I keep attracting people that break my heart? Why do why is my marriage so sad? Some of you are here. You know the challenge? You're trying so hard not to be like your dad. Not to be like your mom. And that's what you're becoming like. You saw how your mom was maltreated because she had no finance. And you know, one lady, the question in the other service, he said that I saw how my father abused my mom because she had no finance. He said, I made up my mind. I will have my source of income. You get into a marriage. The man says, 
don't walk for two years, get pregnant. He said, never, never. You, I know what you want to do. He has nothing. You are just reacting from your past. You are the kind of person that puts mileage on when your husband goes because your father was a cheater. So he said, oh, honey, where did you go? He said, how do you know? She said, your driving is just 25 kilometers. You went today, it's 32. And 32 means that that's your friend that is a girl. That's a son to our house. And the reason, see, there's, you, be, you start calling problems to your marriage. You start calling what does not exist. And the reason why is that there's emotional baggage that you need to take off. But you are so, do you notice how I'm, I don't even feel it? Because you can get so used to it. You never feel it. To, to you, all the girls, all they want is sex. What did that, what happened to you? Where did you grow up? Who told you that? What happened to you? All the girls want is money. What happened to you? There's this fear you have. Another pattern is attachment and deta detachment. When you just, you, some of you, to detach is a problem. When you attach, I mean, there's a, there's a divorce I was in, involved in, and one divorce, they brought the divorce to me. I said, I told them, I said, but I told you guys 15 years ago that this will end up bad. I said, because the way this girl was hanging on, I knew she had a negative attachment syndrome. You just can't let go. You, you can't let go. You can't let go. Because there's a story within it. You've been left alone for so long, you just can't let go. And if you're watching and you're listening, 